Welcome back to Encore's Time Master. In this video we're going to discuss the setup. I just want to note that the built-in manual is accessible by tapping on the manual button. This manual is also downloadable from our website in PDF format. So please look at the Time Master page and look for the documentation section. We recommend turning the phone into landscape mode and then double tapping on the text zooms it in so it's a bit easier to read. Okay, the setup options are grouped into its basic function, the database function. So let's dive right in, tap on database. So you can see we ha have our clients, projects, tasks, and expenditures. And also, if you have the optional billing module, you'll have the taxes and terms. So let's say that you had entered a client previously and you needed to modify it. We tap on the clients, and you can also see that we pop up a notice recommending that you do a backup with Time Master Central on your Mac or PC before modifying the data on here. If you delete an entry, uh, you can always restore it from the backup that you just did. So we'll tap on that. And we're going we can also add clients here by tapping on the plus button or we'll just tap on the row to edit that entry. Now let's say we needed to add a code to this client. So we can tap on the code field, add the code. Now we have a code. We can also change the rate, say that we're charging them a different rate now. It's years gone by and we're raising our rate a little bit and we're now charging $93 an hour. Can change that here. And we now also have the rounding available inside the client. So you can either use the global or no rounding, up, down, or nearest, just like in the global screen. If you have the optional invoice module, you can select the tax enter the tax rates that you put in by tapping on the plus button and that will be used on the uh, entries for the invoice uh, if your time entries are taxable tap on this row put a check mark there and when you create a new time entry the taxable will be automatically checked same goes for expenses if you want your expenses to be taxable when you create a new ex expense entry have that checked also terms for showing up on the invoice we added a couple terms here and these will show up on the invoice also. Okay, so let's save that. And if you wanted to delete an entry, you tap on the edit. And again, we're warning that whenever you delete a client, it will also delete any time entries, expenses, or projects and tasks, and any invoices associated with it. So, very important to do backups before you do any type of deletions, we recommend. So, if you wanted to delete it, you tap on the little circle and tap on delete. So we're going to get out of here and we're all done with the clients. Same goes for the projects, tasks, and expenditures and also the taxes and terms very easily editable in here. Now we also have ability to purge older entries. So say for example we wanted to purge entries from January 1st of 2005 to December 31st we could set those dates in here and you could also pick just a specific client that you want to purge for or just a specific project or task or any combination of those so let's go ahead and tap the purge and as you can see we found one matching entry and ask us if we're sure we want to delete this because it cannot be undone so we're going to delete the one entry and boom the one entry from 2005 is now gone and it works the same way for expenses too you can purge out old expenses if you want don't really have to. The phone seems to run very well even with thousands of entries. Um, invoices, same thing. You can purge uh, all their invoices if you wanted to and just for a specific client. Okay, if you don't like all these warnings, you've read them enough times, you can disable the warnings, but just be warned that you won't get the warnings anymore. Okay, so now let's go to the general section. And in the general section, we have our entry rollover. This is if you're a night shift worker and say that you normally work till 2 a.m. in the morning. You'll want to set this a little later than that. You probably want to set it to like uh, 4 if you know that even with an overtime, you'll never work past um, any later than 4 a.m. You'll want to set this a little bit past when you're uh, normal work ends and that way it will keep any time entries in the time entry it will keep it green even if it goes past midnight now up till four in the morning 
even though it's the prior date, it will stay as today's entry, so long as it was entered after 4 a.m. in the morning from the prior day. Okay, the global rate is the rate that you'll charge your customers if you don't specify it in either the client project task. And this is required, so please enter this. Uh, multi-timers, you, if you want, you can have multi-timers. We have it disabled by default. And say, for example, we went in and we have uh, another entry. We'll just create another entry here. I'm going to copy. And now we have two entries. If we have multi-timers, as you can see, now we have two entries going. Tap on it again, it'll stop them. Uh, or you can have it so that it asks you every time what you want to do, if you want to start or, or copy. And of course with disabled, it just switches between the two. So if you tap on one and then tap on the other, we'll start the other one. Okay, rounding. We have the most flexible rounding options, we think, for any of the time tracking applications. You can round up and you can do it by hours, minutes, and seconds, anything you want. And say that it's uh, you're a, a lawyer and you like uh, doing the tenth of an hour, you'll round up to the nearest six minutes. Up to, up to six minutes. You can also do nearest, which will uh, round, if it's 50% it will round up, if it's 49 and below it will round down and down will always round down to the nearest uh, increment. Okay, so we'll leave that set for one minute. Uh, start old entry. What this is for is when you tap on the old entries uh, it can either ask, always copy, or always start. So, like we just went into the time entry and if we tap on one of the old ones, which is denoted by the gray color instead of the green color, it's going to ask us what we want to do. If we want to start it or copy it, if we copy it, of course, we'll copy it into a brand new entry and we'll start the timer immediately. So let me just delete that. Okay, or you can always have it copy or always start, even if it's an old time entry. Also note that if you have invoiced something, it will only give you the copy option. It will not start a timer that's on an invoice that's either billed or paid. It will start a pending one, however. Okay, time mode. This just is what you like to see on your time entry screens. You can have a display all three, stop, start, and duration. Or if you don't use timers and you just want to see start and stop, you can have it just display those two. Or if you only use timers and don't really care about the stop time, just use start and duration. Time quick pick. This is our handy little quick picker for the times. As you can see, you can add plus times to your entries real quick. This is our little preview here. Say that, for example, you wanted to change this to doing six minutes for the center buttons. You can see these are now six minutes. And you can do that for all three buttons are, are modifiable to whatever you like to set them at. Each pair of three. And the last thing is the week starts here. If your work week starts on a different day of the week, say for example Tuesday, if you do any reporting by last week or this week, it will run th from this day to the previous day. So if you have it Tuesday through Mondays, those two filters will allow you to pick the proper dates by using this. Okay, that's the end of the general.